but we were getting hotter. It was 112 degrees. 112 degrees. And we had just shorts on and tennis shoes, and we were burning up. And we were thirsty. I don't know if you've ever tried to spit and nothing comes out. I don't know if, if you understand what it means to be thirsty. But I'm talking thirsty. Where, where you could, if you could cry, you would drink the tears. I mean, we were almost ready to say, we've got to get some help somewhere because we're going to die out here. We found the place that had dirty water, and we moved the rocks back, and, it, and we tried to, to, to clean. I mean, it was a little tiny stream out in the middle of nowhere. And, and we tried to, to move the stuff back, you know, so you could make a little bit of palm water and drink it. And we come to find out we licked it, and it had salt in it. So we're already dehydrated. So now thirst upon thirst, and it compounds itself. And we laid there, and we just, we just cried. We just said, we've got to have help. We're dying of thirst. Fortunately, there were some other hikers that came to the area later and rescued us, but we were in bad shape. I remember that when this scripture talks about thirst. I remember that. And that causes such an understanding inside my spirit. I know what it means to be thirsty. I know what it means to go without water. One of the few things on the earth that you must have. And when you don't have it, everything inside of you starts to shut down. And you are really in serious, serious shape. So when this lady tells Jesus at the fountain, give me to drink, I know what she's talking about. Have you come to that place in your life? If you haven't reached that place in your life where you understand what it means to be so thirsty, then that water he won't give you. You see, she was truthful with Jesus. He asked her a question. He might be asking you a question. He might be saying, where are you in your position with me? Where do you stand right now? Where is your heart? What are your motives? What are you really trying to do? And if you're honest with him, he'll extend that water. But you've got to be thirsty to be honest. You've got to be thirsty to understand worship. You've got to be thirsty to want to enter into that place where only that hunger drives you. No other motivation. Nothing else. No other, nothing else causes you to want to get there other than I want what you've got, Lord Jesus. Not so that I can build a kingdom, not so that I can get money, not so that my family can be healed. I want it because I have got to have it. My life will never, ever go on if I can't drink from you. You understand? When you get that hungry, when you get that thirsty, then Jesus can see the truth in you. And then that truth will start to come out in worship when he feeds your spirit with the living water. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. When that living water goes inside my spirit because I've told the truth and I've been honest with my Lord and I'm tired of where I'm at and I don't want no more of what I've got and I don't care what anybody thinks, I don't care what anybody looks at me, I don't want anything but that living water, Jesus, and I'm going to be truthful with you, and I'm not going to do anything else but to get to your living water. That truth will push you through the crowd, push you past everybody else that says you can't have it, past everything in your life that has prevented you from getting there because you don't see anybody else. You have blinders on your head and you're focused. 
because of the thirst, because of the hunger. And then you're truthful. And then your spirit gets fed with that living water. And then worship comes. Worship is a natural release from that condition. That's worship. It's not a conjured up any other way. It's your truthfulness getting you to the living water. It's your thirst. It's your hunger that separates you from everybody else. Everybody else can be satiated with fast food. Everybody else can drink from Jacob's well. You can't. You've got to have the living stuff. You've got to have the everlasting water. You've got to have it. You can't live without it. When you get there, when you get there, that's the place where Jesus will give it to you. You've got to show Jesus how serious you are. He will see everything in you that has distracted you, and he will show you the truth. He'll show you that those five husbands you've had, it might not be in the natural, but it might be a connection to something else, attachments to this world, companionship to something else. You need this. You need riches. You need fame. You need popularity. Whatever it is, those are the husbands that you've got to be honest with Jesus about and say, I don't care anymore. I just want what you've got, Jesus. Give me to drink. Give me to drink. I'm dying of thirst. I've got to have it. And then your spirit can be fed. And then worship. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Now I know what it feels like to drink the living water. Now I have the understanding of the scripture that I've read only in a two dimension. Now it's three dimensions in me. It's touched my spirit, not just my soul and my body, but my spirit has been drinking now. And I, and I can't stop. I got to have more. And the more you eat of the Bible, the more thirsty you get. And the more you eat of God's word, the thirstier you get. And Jesus says, don't worry, I don't run out. Come get it. Come get it. Come get it. One of the reasons I fast is because I learned a long time ago, the Lord told me, he said, listen, fasting is not a big deal if you don't have anything to live for. Well, let's see. That's really true, Holy Spirit. And then I learned something else. He said, the more you sacrifice natural food, the more room you make for the spiritual food. And the hungrier you'll get for it. That's the key. You can have a lot of food before you, but if you're not hungry, what, what difference does it make? If you don't have the hunger, all this food 